Spirit, Stallion of the Cimarron, is one of, if not the, boldest animated features to ever grace the big screen. Every frame of this film is a testament to what can be done when creators are given free reign to make what they want to make, and given the time and budget needed to bring their vision to life. It is a love letter to the American West. Its story is profound. And to top it all off, it has a beautiful art style that will probably never be replicated. I haven't made a video essay in years. I find that the process of writing a script, then creating a decent recording of said script, isn't what I enjoy. But after deciding to make a new complete animation video focusing on a character from Spirit, I figured I should rewatch the movie before starting. That might have been a mistake on my part, because as soon as the movie finished, I dug out my mechanical keyboard with green switches because I knew I would be typing a lot to get the thoughts in my head out of my head. The first thing that greets viewers when watching Spirit is Hans Zimmer's soundtrack. I hope I don't need to elaborate on this incredible composer's accomplishments, but suffice it to say that his talents are put to full use in this film. In a film with so little dialogue, the other aspects of audio need to pull extra weight and the musical score does so perfectly. One of the more surprising aspects of the music is the choice in instruments. If anyone were to try and peg a genre on this film, they would first realize that it doesn't really fit into any established genre. If they really stretched, they'd probably say that it's a western. But the music doesn't fit any of the tropes of that genre's music. There are no guitars, there are no jaw harps, whistles, banjos, fiddles, flutes, None of the instruments commonly associated with Western films are present, because this movie isn't a mere Western film. Rather, it is an artistic depiction of an ideal West, and Hans Zimmer's soundtrack uses much loftier and regal instruments to adequately complement the essence of that ideal. As of the time of this writing, traditionally drawn Western animated films are rarer than gold. The only studio currently doing such films is Cartoon Saloon. The last 2D film made by Walt Disney Animation Studios was 2011's Winnie the Pooh. After a decade of almost nothing but 3D animation, it is almost jarring to go back and see one of the last examples of traditionally animated films. I have nothing against 3D animation, but when it is the only thing the entire industry makes, it makes me wish it wasn't the only thing they made. As such, Spirit's visuals hit me harder now in 2021 than they ever did back when it was released in 2002. Spirit came from a time when 2D was being fused with 3D to create visuals that wouldn't be possible otherwise. Spirit's dynamic sweeping camera has to be seen to be understood. The thrill of seeing these hand-drawn characters running through slot canyons will never get old to me. While jarring at first, the painterly backgrounds add just a touch of fantasy to an otherwise grounded world. If Spirit were to be compared to other movies, the closest comparison would be Disney's animated classic Bambi. More than any other film, Spirit picks up where Bambi left off in terms of themes and presentation. And this is where I show how cynical I am about the animation industry at large. It is my firm belief that we are unlikely to ever see a new movie like Spirit anytime soon. A movie that explores naturalistic animals living out the circle of life in a world largely devoid of man. The reason why? Animation is expensive and studios are controlled by suits who care more about maximizing profits rather than green lighting art that challenges and expands the medium. This is why 2D animated features are so rare, and why modern 3D faces all look the same. It's a miracle that Spirit was ever made at all. Even back in 2002, studios wanted to make movies that ticked all the boxes and wanted to maximize profits. Spirit would never be that movie. It wasn't cute enough. It wasn't whimsical enough. It wasn't cool enough. It wasn't mature enough. Whatever these boxes are that studios cross off to guarantee financial success, Spirit didn't check any of them. In my book, I call that artistic integrity. And Spirit's artistic integrity is basically unmatched in this day and age. While re-watching the film, I would regularly throw my arms toward my screen and exclaim something along the lines of, How? How is this movie this good? How is it so beautiful? How is this movie ever greenlit? 
Whether it be a particularly appealing bit of character animation or a shot of western landscape that filled me with a sense of awe, wonder, and adventure, this movie can't seem to go five minutes without making me stand up in my chair and wonder why the animation industry can't replicate or do better than something that was done 19 years ago. Only, there has been. There has been one creator who has been able to make a traditionally hand-drawn work of animation that finally understands the value of telling stories with as little dialogue as possible. Gendy Tartakovsky. Gendy Tartakovsky's final season of Samurai Jack and his Primal are the modern successors of Spirit the Stallion of the Cimarron. While they are only animated series and not feature films, their artistic integrity is unmatched by any of their contemporaries. Their focus on quiet scenes of wilderness tranquility are basically unheard of, unseen of, whatever, in animation. Their art styles reject the notions about what adult animation should look like. Yes, Gendy's shows are violent, but their violence has a level of maturity and restraint that is hard to describe. If you take any of the violent scenes out of context and just view the highlight clips on their own, it does indeed seem overindulgent and immature. But if you watch the entirety of the piece, the violent parts start to not only seem more sensible and not out of place, they begin to seem necessary, as if the violence being left out would have made the story impossible to tell. Spirit also has its own violent punctuations, but they show the same level of restraint that Gendy Tartakovsky shows. Every gunshot is carefully considered. High caliber bullets actually do the damage you would expect them to. A train rolling down a mountain feels just as heavy as you would hope it would. Spirit's story is about as complete and perfect as a story can be. It takes the characters everywhere they need to go. It explores every environment and landscape it should. It ends just when it needs to, and it needs no sequel, no follow-up. Spirit explored every one of its concepts to their completion. It is a perfectly self-contained work of art that needs no more elaboration, and we don't need to know what happens next. Which is one of the reasons why I am so opposed to the animated series that has the gall to take the Spirit name and turn it into something so incompatible with the original work. Spirit, Stallion of the Cimarron, spent its entire runtime to explain to the audience that Spirit, his herd, and the land that they call home should not be tamed. Not even the Indian way of life was free enough for Spirit. The movie went to great lengths to show that Spirit, the non-talking horse, was the main character, and his freedom from man was of the utmost importance. Spirit Untamed was released in 2021 as a feature film adaptation of the animated series that took the spirit name, the likeness of the horse, and left everything else behind. As a standalone movie, it would be harmless enough and actually include some appealing visuals. It is clearly meant to cater to a particular demographic, which is fine enough, but what I take issue with is how little regard it gives to the original work, especially how little it needed it. If you want to make a movie about pre-teen girls in a western town riding their horses to stop a bunch of horse wranglers in a grand adventure, that sounds just fine, and like a movie I would enjoy parts of. But the minute you add the likeness and name of spirit into the movie, you've added a lot of baggage that you probably aren't going to handle properly. Spirit Untamed is basically an oxymoron of a title. Stallion of the Cimarron literally ended human dialogue by saying that he could not be tamed, and shouldn't be. And Spirit Untamed has untamed in its title. <laughs> but in the movie, Spirit spends one montage in a corral before gladly carrying the non-Spirit main character all around the rest of the movie, and the worst part is Spirit didn't even need to be there. If he got rid of the spirit name, removed his likeness, nothing would change. Literally nothing about the movie would change if spirit wasn't in it. I'm not usually like this. I am an animation enthusiast who loves animation for the sake of animation. I have gladly sat through animated works with garbage tear stories because I just wanted the eye candy. 
but Spirit Stalling the Cimarron is different. It is one of the rare examples of a perfectly told story combined with breathtaking visuals that has left a lasting impression on me. And I'm usually not overly concerned with properties I enjoy being mishandled. But these low-budget 3D horse shows that casually take the Spirit name bother me. I still have a lot more to say about Spirit, but I'm kind of done with this video essay. I never intended this YouTube channel to have the highest quality of content or the most complete. Except when it comes to presenting complete animation. With that in mind, I'd like to thank you for watching this shorter video essay and hope to see you in the next one, whenever that one might be.